Welcome to what is going to be me sort of experimenting with a slightly different format, a short or shorter video explaining a specific concept or theory with a little less history than when I do history videos. Uh, and the intent is that I can refer people back to them if this concept comes up in a video I'm doing more on history. So today I'm going to be talking about the degenerated worker state theory put forth by Leon Trotsky. A note on terms and translations. Now, in English, we tend to associate bureaucrats with boring people who handle lots of paperwork. And for me, when I hear the word bureaucrat, I think Hermes Conrad, played by Philomar from Futurama, uh, who works as the bureaucrat for Planet Express. And well, he does things like process paperwork, and he worked as a robot product inspector. And I think this is the very general idea of what a bureaucrat is. People who fill up paperwork inspect things. Uh, so this results in an inevitable question of, wait, why is having people who check work or file paperwork bad? And this is really not what Trotsky's trying to say. So keep this in mind that Trotsky is specifically calling attention to the privileges of such position. Trotsky's not opposed to people, say, inspecting things for safety, but he would be if they had a special government position, extra pay, and, like, were themselves a bureaucrat as, like, their job, meaning that's all they were. Uh, under any system, you're going to have to have people that verify things like train wheels or wearing correctly and file some paperwork saying, hey, I made sure the wheels looked good and we they weren't all going to fail and kill everybody. But this person shouldn't be paid more of special privileges, titles, or ranks. This should be purely administrative work that everyone takes on rather than a special rank or class of people. So, on the theory itself, and this is a summary of what it really was post-1936, and it really wasn't a static theory, and it, Trotsky developed it over the course of the 1930s. The transitional character. Try to consider the Soviet Union a degenerated worker state. This means it was a dictatorship of the proletariat or a worker state that had undergone a degeneration due to its isolation. This was not socialism nor capitalism, but a state in transition. It is important to remember that the dictatorship of the proletariat is transitional. It is not the lower phase of communism. In 1918, Lenin wrote and rewrote in 1921, no one, I think, in studying the question of the economic system of Russia, has denied its transitional character, as well as in another speech in 1918. I have no illusions about us having only entered the period of transition to socialism, about not yet having reached socialism. We are far from having completed even the first transitional period from capitalism to socialism. We have never cherished the hope that we could finish it without the aid of the international proletariat. And Trotsky, at a speech at the Fourth Congress of the Comintern, said, In that case, the transition from war communism to genuine socialism would doubtless have taken place in much shorter time and without the convulsions and retreats which isolated the proletarian Russia has had to endure these five years. The issues of an isolated proletariat in Russia and that this economy was transitional and not socialist was present in speeches by both Lenin and Trotsky back to 1918. And you can see Trotsky's theories uh, following the same thread of the 1930s. Now, Trotsky thought the degeneration of the state would inhibit the state from moving forward to the lower phase of communism, sometimes called socialism. Instead, it was stuck with a capitalistic measure of value and not a socialist mode of production, but not a fully capitalist state. So, the source of the degeneration, and that is that... This was not because of the bad intentions of any given man, but an historical process that slowly degenerated the leading segments into forming their own caste of bureaucrats. But this was a caste, not a new class of capitalists over the proletariat. Trotsky in 1935 wrote in How Did Stalin Defeat the Opposition? It was the success of a new leading layer of the revolutionary aristocracy which was trying to liberate itself from the control of the masses and which needed a strong and reliable arbiter in its internal affairs. Stalin, a figure from the second rank in the proletarian revolution, appeared as an unchallenged leader of the Thermidorian bureaucracy, first in its ranks, nothing more. Now, we'll get back to this in detail in comparison to some accounts by historians. To understand this degeneration, you must understand something that about the transition to socialism under communism, humanity will, of course, be able to fully live up to the ideal, from each according to his ability to each according to his needs. However, during this transitional period, and to some extent during socialism, humanity will be still forced to retain some of the inequalities of the capitalist periods, known as bourgeois rights. The task of regulating these bourgeois rights obviously falls into a certain component of the state, but if this component is allowed to get out of hand, it would have no motivation to reduce inequality, and it would seek to defend its position and hold back the transition to communism. This is the part of the state which is exactly responsible for the bureaucratic degeneration of the USSR. The isolation and destruction brought about by the Civil War is what made this process particularly inevitable and quick in the USSR. Had the revolution in Germany succeeded, the aid from Germany as well as the reduction in how destructive the Civil War was, I think would have prevented this. 
Trotsky predicted that unless this caste was overthrown, the state would eventually return fully to capitalism, but that an overthrow of the state would only be a political, not a social revolution. And from this, it is necessary to advocate for the defense of the USSR, but not a defense of Stalin, but a defense of what progressive elements there is against Stalin. Trotsky was not alone in fearing a return to capitalism, of course. Some believe the Soviet Union had developed a new capitalist class at this point. Not Trotsky, though. Lenin, in 1922, at a speech at the 11th Party Congress, pointed towards state officials as one of the main dangers, the idea that they can make a return to capitalism. Thou thousands and tens of thousands of bourgeois or of state Soviet employees whose function is to operate our new economic policy. This is the real and main danger. He also warned that communists were being led by the bureaucratic machine. If we take Moscow with its 4,700 communists in responsible positions, if we take that huge bureaucratic machine, that gigantic heap, we must ask, who is directing whom? I doubt very much it can truthfully be said the communists are directing that heap. To tell the truth, they are not directing, they are being directed. And of course, in the party crisis, Lenin already called the Soviet state a worker state with bureaucratic distortions. Now, that is the main bulk of this theory, but this results in a practical position in regards to Trotsky's belief in the need to defend the USSR. We can see this in the USSR in war. Trotsky said if Hitler turned his armies against the USSR, remember, Trotsky didn't li live to see the invasion of the USSR, so this was speculation. The USSR must be defended as they cannot permit Hitler to overthrow Stalin, but they had to overthrow Stalin, not Hitler, at the next stage once Hitler had been defeated. Trotsky remained against seizures of new territories by the bureaucracy and said they cannot take responsibility for Stalin's actions in Poland or Finland. These events showed the need to rip the USSR from the hands of the bureaucracy. Why did Trotsky defend the USSR? Well, it ties back into that he felt the USSR needed a political revolution and not a social revolution. He felt what remained of the social revolution needed defending so that it could be seized by a future political revolution. Now to touch back on how Stalin won and his role in relationship to party officialdom. I think the Stalin being based on party official or bureaucracy is really a fantastic insight, and when Trotsky was right about it in the 30s, historians took much longer to catch up to this analysis, but you can find historians now making very similar understandings of how Stalin won. Of course, two Trotsky and his attacks on Stalin in the late 20s tended to focus more on his personality and were more lacking than much better theory developed and produced in the revolution betrayed. From Stalin, A New History, edited by Sarah Davies and James Harris. Stalin's actions were supported by the vast majority of state and party officials. Their support for Stalin was rooted in their shared interests, of course. Their shared interests apart from opposition to inter-party democracy, Stalin remained attentive to the needs and desires of party officialdom. Stalin's rise to power was made possible by the active collusion of leading party and state officials. We can see here some similarities to Trotsky's general thesis that of this not being because Stalin was just scary and everyone listened to him, but his rise was built off sharing interests with the officialdom that was forming. And a note on deformed degenerate workers' state theory. Of course, Trotsky's theory could be hardly described as bulletproof. Sometimes analysis can lag behind the objective conditions or is just wrong about future events. Trotsky's predictions about World War II certainly were, though Marxists are certainly no strangers to making predictions and being wrong. We can't see into the future. Things like overturns in Eastern Europe and China or Cuba, Trotsky's position required more development, and there no doubt would have been more developments had he not been murdered and lived to see this. And this is where the various theories of deformed worker state or degenerate worker state and the various different Trotskyist parties' understanding of those, which tend to differ a bit. Others also saw it as evidence that the USR can no longer be called the worker state, but I won't get into this video as this is about Trotsky's theories, but I wanted to mention their existence. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please comment what your thoughts on this and the style of video is. I don't think I'll do a ton of these, but a few more if they are well received, uh, whenever I feel like it. My next video will be part one of my video on Bukhara, and it's actually already done recording and being edited. The reason this is coming out first is because I kind of just randomly wrote this while I added some downtime at work. And so it was just easier to get out before the Bukharan video that I've been working on for some time.